Derry City stuttering start to the League of Ireland campaign continued at the Brandywell yesterday. Podrick Moran putting Sligo Rovers 1-0 up just after the break. Derry City did equalise shortly afterwards. Paul Doolan's flying header from Carlisle's free. But a minute from the end, Sligo maintained their 100% record. A volley from Ray Mooney. Despair for Derry. And use as early as the seventh minute. Steve Burke's rising to glance home the free kick from the left. Perfect finish, giving Jody Byrne no chance, but he might have wondered about the defenders in front of him. Darren Grogan delivering the cross, and Burks sending it to the back of the net. In the second half, Cork threw everything into attacking the tight end goal, but to no avail. And it was a swift counter that puts Ligo 2-0 in front. Johnny Kenny profiting here. The Cork defence in disarray with men committed forward. Jody Byrne making not one, but two fine stops, but couldn't keep out Porig Moran's finishing effort. The goalkeeper doing all that could reasonably be demanded of him, getting down low to the first effort by Kenny, and then Moran's follow-up. But third time lucky for Sligo, 2-0. And the holders well and truly dispatched as the final whistle approached. Another swift attack once more. Kenny skinny the pullback. And there to finish it off, once again, Steve Burks, his second goal of the night. Running off a comprehensive win for Sligo Rovers. Yes, 3-0 it was in the finish. The season barely a month old, but a new order beginning to assert itself. Not only did Sligo Rovers account for the league hub holders, they'd begun the week at the head of affairs in the National League itself. Their latest joust in that competition took place at Dalymount Park last night. Bohemians against Sligo now, Peter Collins reports. Perfect playing conditions at Dalymount Park last night as Bohemians played host to the league's early pace setters, Sligo Rovers. And it was the visitors who started best, former Dundee and air striker Ian Gilzean coming close there to opening the scoring. Well, when the first goal did come, it was somewhat against the run of play. 20 minutes gone, a good patient build-up across midfield by Bohemians. And while the ball eventually reached Tony O'Connor, his deflected shot brought a good save out of Mark McLean. The Rovers keeper having to adjust his footing quickly there to make that save. Well, the resulting corner was floated into the near post. Up rose Morris O'Driscoll and his looping header gave the Sligo keeper no chance. 1-0 to Bohemians. Well, O'Driscoll had been pushed forward by manager Turlock O'Connor and he just got there ahead of Rovers captain Gavin Dykes to give the home side the lead. Bohemians, spurred on by that goal, then had their best spell of the match and 12 minutes later they made it two. An element of confusion in the Sligo defence was a contributory factor as Mark McLean first saved from Derek Swan but was injured in his attempt to clear the ball the second time. The unguarded goal was an enticing target for Morris O'Driscoll but he made no mistake from well outside the area. But worrying times for Sligo as McLean stayed down after trying to make that clearance. Here we see the replay once again. Possibly Grogan should have controlled it better there but a fine finish from Morris O'Driscoll to give Bohemians a 2-0 lead before half-time. Well, Sligo keeper McLean was to play no further part in the game, having injured his shoulder in the lead-up to that goal, and the keeper's jersey was taken by Johnny Kenny. Well, the Sligo winger, somewhat out of position between the posts, had to use his natural pace to make things difficult for Bowes during this second-half attack, the ball eventually falling to Derek Swan. As we see now, his shot was just off-target. Well, on the balance of play, Sligo Rovers must have wondered what they had done, and more to the point, what they had not done, to deserve to be two goals down. Chances did come in the second half, but the breaks never quite fell their way. Uh, we took, got the goals just at the right time. I thought Sligo played really well, and uh, we were delighted to have taken our chances. And uh, considering the start that we had with this, this particular season, uh, I'm delighted with the three points. Overall, how happy were you with the performance? I was uh, reason I was delighted with the commitment that we've got. We, the, the players gave 100%. Uh, we didn't play as well as we would have liked to play. We liked to pass the ball a little bit more than we did tonight. Uh, but I think that was the nerves and that got to us just a little bit. But uh, hopefully now we can go and we can build on that. I thought tonight, you know, they played some great football. They're just, there was, um, sometimes the final ball let us down a little bit, and obviously the chances in and around the box we could have done with a bit more luck. But um, having said that, you know, uh, I thought they were magnificent tonight, and I, anybody who tells me different, I won't listen to. So I'm not bothered about what anybody else has got to say. I'm the manager, they're my players. We'll go through thick and thin, and we'll be there or thereabouts.
Hope it goes well for you for the The rain-lashed showgrounds produced a fine Sligo comeback after they'd fallen behind early on. Goalkeeper Mark McLean's clearance, giving Kevin Flanagan the opportunity of putting City ahead on 11 minutes. Parity was restored seven minutes before the break. Dave Reed's incisive ball winning in midfield set up Ian Gilzean, and his through ball caught City Square. Porig Moran with the decisive finish past Jody Byrne. That's six goals now for the Sligo striker. Manager Steve Cottrell is Sligo firing just now, and there was no way Cork City could deny them on this form. Darren Grogan hit the bar, Gareth Cronin clearing for Cork. And then a woeful miskick by John Coffey led to another marvellous strike by Moran. Burn save had to be first class. And already into the final of the League Cup, Sligo settled the game in a seven-minute spell early in the second half. John Kenny ghosting in at the far post to finish superbly. His first league goal since opening day. And then he provided a sparkling run and cross which proved just too good for Cork City's defence. Ian Gilzean finishing with a header his father Alan would have been proud of in his heyday at Spurs. 3-1 the final score. Cork's first league defeat. And it was all too much for their player manager, Rob Hindmarsh, who took out his frustration on Gilzean in one of the unsavoury instants of an exciting game. Indeed, the City boss was very lucky that the referee didn't see him pushing Andy Ramage at the final whistle. It's just not good enough for players to set an example like that. And no doubt that's not the last we'll hear of that incident. Winning the title is one thing, retaining it quite another, as the fact that only two teams have managed it in two decades will testify. Dundalk are struggling. Early frustration coming up for Brian Byrne. Setting the tone for much of what was to follow for the champs. Miserable night, but there were moments to illuminate it. Like Sligo's neat football. Evidence of the presence of so many full-time professionals in their ranks. Former international Mark Kelly, prominent in this. Giving right back Keith Long a torrid time. His cross picking out the normally reliable Johnny Kenny. But not so reliable on this occasion. Johnny Kenny's account boasts three goals this season. The Dork at their moments, too. The veteran Anto Whelan beginning this move. Like most of their good ones, it involved Brian Byrne in confrontation here with Robbie Brunton. Support arriving in the person of Tom McNulty. Not much wrong with it so far. But the final one, too, with Stephen Kelly was ill-judged. Breakdown at the crucial moment, an indication of why the goals have been so few and far between for the champions. Sligo, too, guilty of profligacy. Forceful attack here. With the right amount of pressure applied to Anto Whelan, forcing him into the rash clearance. But Ian Gilzean's finish was poor. Goldmouth incident at a premium then, but not for the want of trying. Doohan. And then Cody. And on to Hanrahan. Dundalk's left field axis. Byrne keeping up the good work. And McNulty forcing his way through. And Byrne bringing a brave save from McLean. And from this, more evidence of Sligo's togetherness. You can see the benefits of full-time training in their superb passing defeat. The chance when it arrived fell to Kenny. Wild and wide. Against Shamrock Rovers a fortnight before, Peter Withnell had been a towering presence. He wasn't quite so towering against Sligo, but he did enough to help burn on his way here, taking responsibility himself that in dock number 11 was very unfortunate not to make that goal number one. It was a great effort, a lovely left foot shot, well thought out. And when he fired in the shot, the dip came just fractionally too late to bring it into the back of the Sligo net. Set-piece opportunities presented themselves, too. Mick Dewan's header, though, too high to really trouble McLean. The Dock bearing the look of a team who've been struggling to score. Second half, the frustrations continued. Peter Withnell tried to bustle his way through, but fouling Aspinall. And still, they surged forward in search of a goal that just wouldn't come. Stephen Kelly, the instigator. McNulty carrying things forward for Dundalk's star man, Byrne. McLean at full stretch to save. 
Eight minutes into the second half, the goal that was to decide it all, and one of those that carry the label, they all count, don't they? Brunton sweeping in the cross, Gilzine's leap deceiving Van Boxtel, and the goalkeeper never recovered. Twice Kelly nearly beat him before Gilzine forced it home. Rovers' top scorer, three goals in four matches. They're all happy to join him in his victory salute. Not a sequence that Dundalk defence will relish. The poor goalkeeper with butter in the fingers and egg in the face. And Ian Gilzine, no man to spurn such an opportunity. No, you'd think with Peter Withnell. Peter, maybe you should turn off the TV. Within 90 seconds, this should have been the equaliser. Oops. No, Peter, sparing your blushes, no replay. The stuffing for the moment knocked out of Dundalk, leaving Sligo to seek the insurance goal. Brunton with this shot, Van Boxtel secure. And then more Gilzine inspired problems for the home team. Seven goals this season now. This time, Van Boxtel getting away with it. Their ardour, though, nothing dampened, still the hope of a point. Sligo introduced their latest full timer, Matt Rawlings, from Arsenal. And Dundalk responded by creating their best chance of the last quarter hour. Yet another Keith Long cross, this time for the free kick. Joe Hanrahan with the shot. McLean making the save. Reasons to be cheerful, not least for Ian Gilzine. We've still had a couple of bad games. I mean, we went to UCD, uh, went away to Bowes, and it was about time I think we got a result away from home. Because we've been playing well at home and not getting the just deserves away. Well, now you've done that, you've sorted that out. How are you finding the League of Ireland in general? Uh, yeah, it's OK. A bit physical, but it's OK. The goals are going in, that's amazing. Yeah, if they keep going in, I'll take one and knock something get. They've had a hard couple of weeks, you know, with a League Cup game sandwiched in between, so now they've got a good break. And a few of them are going home to England, as, uh, as I myself. And I'm uh, looking forward to seeing my family, and it's um, obviously on the back of a good result, so I'm very pleased. Well, it's a good run. Three wins in a row, you're in the final of the League Cup, and you're now joint top on points, at least for tonight. Well, yeah, that's what I said. I mean, we've had weeks where other sides have played on a Thursday night and a Friday night, and we've had to wait on Saturday till Saturday for our games. And uh, I wanted to put the ball in a few other people's courts now, because we've had the pressure on us that we, we've had to produce in a few of our games. So, uh, so now we'll just, you know, see how a few other teams have to go now, because that means if they want to stay top, they have to continue to, uh, to score goals and, and win games. So, yeah, I'm, just, I'm very pleased for my boys. They've worked their socks off. They had to defend at times, but you're going to have to do that. Dundalk are the champions. Two wins out of eight is hardly championship form. No. Um, we needed the win today to really propel us into the top, and we haven't taken the opportunity. Uh, overall, it was a poor match, and um, that was always a, it was very tight. One mistake was going to win, and unfortunately we made a mistake, and uh, we're struggling a little bit, yeah. What is the problem? Is it goals not going in, or is it simply that you just haven't gelled yet? Um, obviously not scoring goals is a problem, but we haven't put teams under any concerted pressure. Not only here, even last year, we were able to put teams in, keep them under pressure and hem them in. We haven't been able to do that this year. Even tonight, even though we went to goal down and we kind of dominated the game, we dominated without putting them any, without putting uh, Sligo under any serious pressure. And that's a problem. We don't seem to be able to get a grip on a game and, and, and kind of grab it by the neck and hold on to it. Um, it's basically the same team, so I, I, I don't know if I knew the exact answer to that. <laughs> I wouldn't be this, I wouldn't be losing my hair.